So about Actera, we are a nonprofit organization servicing the Bay Area, all nine Bay Area counties. Our mission is to bring people together to create local solutions for a healthy planet. Our focus is to address climate change with a priority on equity. We're located in San Francisco Bay Area, particularly Palo Alto. Next slide. And that's our team. I love that picture. And I'd like to give a special thanks to our presenting sponsor, Peninsula Clean Energy. Peninsula Clean Energy, um, Peter Levitt, who I'll introduce next slide, um, will do a little, little presentation at the end about different resources available to you if you're in the PCE region. So thank you, Peninsula Clean Energy. We are collaborating with Sunwork, who is the guest speaker tonight, Mike Balma, who will take care of the bulk of the presentation and all the information that you need regarding your solar rooftops. Next slide. So this is Mike, the guest speaker today. He's the Sunwork's development director. Please check out Sunwork at sunwork.org after this presentation or during the presentation if you wish to learn more about what their nonprofit organization can do for you. Next slide. And then the guest speaker from Peninsula Clean Energy, Peter Levitt. He's the associate manager where he, he, will, um, he will teach you about different rebates and information that you can utilize regarding PCE programs. And OK, Mike, you can go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Brianna. Appreciate that. As you mentioned, Sunwork is a, a nonprofit, and our mission is to really make solar more affordable. Uh, by using trained volunteers. And we'll talk a little bit more about that for folks who actually want to help out with the, the installations. Um, we do have professionals on staff that obviously lead and design it. And we've been doing this for over 10 years now. Uh, we're in the Bay Area as well as uh, expanded down to the Central Coast. And we do focus on homeowners that have low monthly electric bills. So typically needs to be under $100 per month, unless you have an all electric home or a heat pump um, and we do exclude EV charging. We really want to en encourage home electrification. And so we will do uh, you know, larger systems for those folks that have EVs or in all electric homes. Um, but the discussion today is gonna be about you know, going solar overall. Um, uh, we, we do also work with nonprofits such as churches, uh, preschools and, and homeless shelters uh, around the Bay Area and Central Coast. Uh, one other thing that we have added recently is uh, installing heat pump water heaters. Again, trying to help people get off fossil fuels. Uh, we're now doing this. We do have some spe specifics. Uh, they're, they're not uh, energy usage related, uh, but uh, your heat pump, your current water heater needs to be in your garage and you have to have electric service panel there. So it's, we focus on what I call the easier installations. Um, and so if you're interested in that, you can check that out on our website. All right, the, the first thing, oftentimes people you know, sort of skip this step, but it's good to understand why you're actually going solar. It, it may be obvious to some people, but it's actually different for a lot of folks. Um, some people, uh, it's the money. You know? They wanna save on their utility bills or avoid the future utility price increases or even increase the, their property value. Um, PG&E, I, I just heard their next rate increase, they're, they're trying to get a 12% increase. Uh, and so if you can insulate yourself from that, uh, that's a good way to, to you know, save on those future uh, price increases. And it's also been shown through research that by putting solar on, you know, the home actually sells faster. So that's an interesting aspect to, to the whole reason uh, why to go solar. And of course, uh, there are the environmental benefits. You're creating your own electricity, you know, carbon free. Uh, and so that's a good feeling. But there's also uh, technology interest. Uh, we're in Silicon Valley and, you know, this is you're putting semiconductors basically up on your roof, which is kind of a cool thing. And there are electronics that are controlling it. So there are different choices you can make if you want to, um, you know, appeal to your technical interest. Uh, and why it's really important to, to think about these things as you're going solar is, okay, do I want to maximize the 
um, uh, reducing my carbon footprint or do I want to maximize my uh, energy savings or, hey, do I want to pick some cool technology that may not be quite as proven, but it would be fun. And then the last thing is this backup capability. Uh, and what's interesting is oftentimes people think, oh, I've got solar on my roof, the pow power utility goes down, I'm, I'm fine. That's only, you're only fine if you have batteries along with your solar. So it, it, it's, uh, you really have to have that combination. You can't just have the solar. Um, so oftentimes, if you are looking for it for just the backup capability, you need to look for an installer that will do both the, the solar and the batteries. Uh, right now, Sunwork does not do the batteries. We really focus on you know, just installing the solar and the uh, heat pump hot water heaters. All right, so the next thing to think about is, okay, well, how much what's your usage? Uh, and is it gonna go up or down? So taking a look at your electric bill, uh, how many kilowatts uh, do I use, or at least know the average monthly utility bill. Usually that can be converted pretty easily. But if you haven't uh, put in your energy efficiency appliances or your uh, LED light bulbs, you know, then you could be reduced, could reduce your usage. And, and that way, that's the, the most cost effective way to um, save money and, you know, do, do right by the environment. But there's also with the uh, electrification options, you know, whether it's uh, an electric vehicle uh, or, you know, going to electric uh, and specifically a heat pump hot water heater, um, that those things can increase your usage. And in fact, we'll talk about how much that typically increases the usage. Uh, and because the, the key thing is that you really want to install enough solar to cover your future needs. It's definitely the optimal time to do it up front. If you think you're going to get an EV or uh, go all electric, uh, then it's definitely better to do it uh, up front. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, the economies of scale, and two, the programs that you get into when you get solar. And we'll talk about those. So just quickly, in terms of solar, the first thing is, of course, you're going to put solar panels up on the roof. And that converts sunlight into electricity, but it's a certain kind of electricity. It's direct current or DC electricity. And so what you need is the second thing called an inverter. And that converts the DC electricity into AC electricity, which is what your, your homes use. And typically the uh, inverter is on the side of the home, but there are some inverters that we'll talk about that actually go up on the roof with the solar panels. Um, but for this purpose, this is sort of an easier way to think about it. Uh, the, the electricity goes from the solar panels to the inverter. And then the next step is over to your uh, service panel. And so that's another key element uh, in this is you're, you need to have enough room for an extra uh, 240 volt breaker in your service panel. And that's something that your, the, the solar installer can evaluate. Um, but you know, if you can check that else, that's, that's helpful. Um, if you don't have that, then you may need an upgrade to service panel. Um, but there are some things that, that the solar folks can do um, uh, to double up on some of the breakers if your panel will allow it. The next thing is that electricity either goes into your house or turns the meter backwards uh, going out to the utility. And of course, in the utility, you've got uh, available to power your house when the sun isn't shining, like at night and such. So some people think, oh, you know, I've got solar, I don't need the utility. Well, at least for the purposes, we're talking about all, you know, grid connected, we're staying tied to the grid. And that means you get actual um, benefits uh, because the utility has to pay you for your electricity. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But these are the, the essential components uh, that, that for uh, putting solar up on your roof. So let's start with the roof. Uh, the one thing is that the roof should be in good condition. So if your roof um, you know, needs a new roof, then you should definitely do that. Now, oftentimes, you know, ideally, you have 15 plus years remaining. Um, but if you have 10, you know, you can get away with it. And the, the key thing is, uh, when you re-roof after putting solar on, you've got to literally take the solar panels off and put the solar panels back on again, and that's not cheap. So you want to do it uh, ideally when you have uh, many years uh, on your, your roof remaining. 
because the uh, solar system is going to last 25 to 30 years. So you want to make sure that that's uh, key. And of course, it needs to be an unshaded area on the roof too. So you need to have enough. You know, if you're living in a uh, you know a forest, and that may be difficult to actually uh, get the economies of solar going. The next thing is to think about, okay, well, what kind of roofing material do I have? And I've got a, the chart shows you going from the sort of least expensive or the easiest to install, install solar on to the most expensive. Uh, and so if you've got Spanish tile, it's gonna be more expensive than if you've got a, just a standard composition shingle. And in fact, Sunwork only installs on really the most common and the easiest type it's easiest for our volunteers to, to work on. So that's what we focus on, um, but there's certainly the other installers out there who will uh, install on the other more complicated uh, roof types. But be sure that when you're talking to them that you check out their experience because if you're on stone coated steel, that can be really tricky. And so you wanna get a lot of uh, references for where they've successfully done that. All right. Uh, the other thing is just the, the pitch of the roof is also important. In other words, how steep it is. Sunwork will only work on the sort of the uh, modest pitch roofs. If your roof is really steep, it, that's going to be more expensive. And some installers may say, no, we, you know, I don't want to work on that because it's, it's um, you know, too difficult. But just be aware of those things. Okay, on to the panels. So there are two basic types of, of panels. And in some respects, you really don't need to know this stuff. This is sort of the, for the techies. Um, you know, if you want to be knowledgeable, uh, the one on the, the left-hand side of the screen is called polysilicon. Um, and it's typically kind of blue. And you can see the, the grid type pattern. Um, and then the other type is monocrystalline. And you can see there, it's more of a black cells and you've got the diamond. So, you know, you can, you know, look at what your friends have or, or different panels and, you know, be knowledgeable about the, the, the different types of underlying technology. You don't really need to know about it, um, but monocrystal one tend to be a little bit more efficient, uh, but now there's uh, quite a bit of overlap. So it really doesn't make a big difference um, unless you care about the aesthetics of it. Uh, and in particular, um, the, the frames, you do have a choice. You know, most folks go with uh, the black frame, um, but you can go with a, what they call a clear frame, uh, which is just the, the bare aluminum. It's actually a tiny, tiny bit more efficient, but you know, so if you're really efficient enough, nut, you might, or, or into that, you know, you might go with clear, but most people go with the, 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 the black frame for aesthetic reasons. And then if you're really uh, into, into the aesthetics, um, there's what they call a mono black on black. So it's, it's almost completely black. So they're, they're gorgeous. They're typically more efficient and they're definitely more expensive. So that's both from an aesthetic standpoint. And if you've got maybe a small roof area, you might have to go with the high efficient, you know, really high efficient, like those are up to 24% efficient. Um, so, and they almost all of them come with a 25 year warranty. Now that is sort of, that, that goes down over time uh, in terms of what the expectation is because uh, all panels do lose about a half a percent of efficiency uh, each year. Uh, so over a 25 year period, they're typically rated at like 80, at 82% of their specification, their original specification in 25 years. Um, you know, that varies slightly, but uh, you know, something to, to be aware of. Okay, next thing after we talk about the roof, we talked about the, the solar panels. Now we'll talk about the inverters. And there are a couple different types of inverters. Uh, one is typically called a central inverter. And these are for medium and large size systems in general. They typically don't handle shading quite as well um, because it's just one inverter working, uh, managing all of the solar panels. Uh, typical warranty you see there and all of the systems come with some kind of monitoring. We'll talk about that. It will handle a few different directions. So if you had a south facing roof, uh, roof surface and a north facing roof, you could do those large surface areas. Um, um, but you couldn't just have one panel on one side. If you did have, say, one panel that you wanted on one side and most of them on the other, you'd go with what's called a microinverter. Uh, and these are for, you know, either really small systems because you can literally have just one panel if you want. Um, uh, but they're also good for medium systems and even large if you want to, but the economics aren't quite as good. 
Uh, these do have a, a longer warranty, like 25 years. Uh, so that's really good. And you do get the panel level mon monitoring. So literally, I'll, I'll show you a, 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 a website where you can see you know, each panel, what the output is and see, oh my gosh, there's one panel that's, that's degrading. And so it's really good for that. But for larger systems, they, they do cost a little bit more. And so what the technology folks have come up with is sort of a compromise. You have a central inverter with some electronics that they call a DC optimizer that go on the solar panels. And here, typically these are for larger systems. Uh, you can see these, this handle shade well, uh, it's got sort of a combination of warranty, but you do get that panel level monitoring. So it's sort of the best of a both worlds. Um, so again, these are the three types and I've given the, the, the names like central inverter, SMA is the, one of the big brands. Enphase is a micro inverter, uh, the major one there. And solar, solar edge is the main uh, third type of uh, inverter, but you'll hear a few more out there, but these, these are the big ones. Okay, here's, here's an example of the monitoring. And this is really cool um, because you're able to see both on a month to month basis, a daily basis, quarterly basis, you can compare it year to year uh, and you really get an idea of, of what's going on with your system. And again, if you have actual get down to the panel level, you can see, oh my gosh, you know, one panel is having a problem. It's half what the other ones are and it's not because of shade. You know, you may need to call my solar installer and get them out here. So uh, that mon that panel level monitoring can be really helpful if you're if you're into that kind of thing. All right, the next thing to think about is okay, what side of the uh, roof do I want it? Now you may have aesthetic reasons, and that's fine, but it's also good to know just from a sheer performance standpoint which direction is the best. And in, in this part of the the the, the world, uh, the south side uh, of of any you know sloping roof is the optimal side and we'll call that 100%. But the, the next best is Southwest, followed by Southeast, followed by West and then East. And you might, might be asking, well, why is West better than East? And the, act, the answer is that this, these numbers specifically are for the Bay Area and coastal areas uh, in California because uh, we have uh, fog in the morning or low flying clouds. And so you literally just get less sun. So then these numbers account for that. Um, so if you have a preference between East and West and you know, aesthetics are not a concern, you know, West is, is definitely preferred and you know, preferred versus, versus East. The other thing to be aware of is that um, we're now on time of use rates. Uh, and so the peak rates are the summer late, late afternoon, like five to eight. And so that actually uh, says, gives a little few more extra points economically to the Western facing, whether it's Southwest or West. So that's another point in that direction that says, you know, if you have a choice between East or West, you know, West or Southwest is gonna be, you know, preferred from that standpoint. And then just for complete list, if you do have a flat roof, it's actually, you know, not bad, you know, 89%. Uh, so it's actually better than, than East or West from that standpoint. Okay, now we get into sort of some of the economics now that we have some of the technology down. And the key thing is that there's a law that says that you can buy and sell electricity. Of course, you can always buy it. I mean, that's what everybody does. But the selling part is something which there's a law that, that is um, called net energy metering. It basically nets out, okay, you know, you used so much uh, during this hour, but you also sent so much back. And so it nets out how much on an hourly basis you either use or you send back to the grid. And so that's, that's a great thing. And it used to be that, that it was the, the same dollar or cents that it cost to buy the electricity, you could sell it back to the utility. But that was many years ago. And now it's not quite that. Uh, now it's the same amount uh, that it costs, but it's, you, you subtract out 2.3 cents. And that's called non-bypassable charges. That goes to energy efficiency programs and the uh, low-income care programs. Um, so at any rate, you don't get full credit for the energy you send back to the grid. And the other thing that's important to know is that there's a $10 per month minimum charge. So uh, even though you might in the summertime be sending all your electricity back to the grid and, and have a, a net net, 
uh, selling back, you're still going to get charged $10 a month for staying connected to the grid. Now, this is the current NIM2. We'll talk about where things are going in just a minute. Okay, so what, just a quick uh, uh, example of the economics. Uh, typical payback uh, ranges from, from four to 12 years. Uh, so typically you will see five to six. And, and of course, it depends on your energy usage and shading and roof directions and such. But, but here's an example of a five kilowatt system. And this is actually, you know, uh, um, I'll call it an average size system for California. This is definitely large for us Sunwork because we do smaller systems. Um, but if you've got an EV or something like that, uh, you, you'll definitely get into the five kilowatt system and you'll be about 14 or 15 panels uh, and um, gave a range here of between 11,000 and 15,000, you know, dollars. And that breaks into the dollar per kilowatt. And you may hear the, that number thrown around. So 220 a, a, a kilowatt or actually, I guess it's 220 per watt. Uh, that, that's a mistake there. Sorry. Um, that would be a really good price at any rate. Um, you know, 220 is a really good price. Three dollars is, is probably more what you typically see from a, a commercial um, installer. Um, but then there is this 26% tax credit, uh, and we will talk about that a little bit more. But that's going to bring it down uh, pretty significantly, and that is a tax credit. Um, so you have to have some tax to pay uh, to be able to take advantage of that. All you can, although you can carry that forward. At any rate. Savings is going to be about $2,000 per year. So in this example, it's about four to five and a half years for payback. So that's really good. A key part here is I picked a south facing roof with little shade. So if you've got a great environment, you know, you can get a good payback. If you've got, you know, heavily shaded, this payback is going to go up from there. Um, so that's just a, a snapshot of what uh, you might, might see. I think it's a ballpark. Uh, the other thing to know is that if you're in Palo Alto or Santa Clara, the city of Santa Clara, um, they have their own net metering programs where, which are very unfavorable to, to solar. So if you go going solar in Palo Alto or the city of Santa Clara, it's probably not because of the economics. It's either from the environmental standpoint or because you're linking it up with a battery backup to get that uh, resilience if the grid does go down. Okay, um, did wanna just highlight in terms of home electrification. Again, we're trying to get people to use less fossil fuels. So the electric vehicles and the uh, electric uh, heat pump, hot water heaters. Uh, this is an example. If you drove 10,000 miles a year on an EV, you add about six panels. Uh, that would cost you about $650 or, or excuse me, it would save you about $650 and the cost would be about $2,700 for, you know, really good payback. These are all obviously ballpark numbers, pretty much what, what it would be with Sunwork, um, just to give you an idea. And for three people for a heat pump, uh, you'd add just a couple of solar panels. Uh, and you can see the savings and the, the incremental cost there. So the, the key thing is, again, if you're thinking about going solar, thinking about getting an EV in the future, definitely add, you know, six more panels. Uh, or more to be able to handle the, the incremental uh, of going forward. All right. Uh, oh, I guess uh, the other component I'll mention is that on our website, we've actually got a tool. Uh, we've teamed up with a company called Yellow Tin that provides the, the, the uh, um, smarts, basically. It's a web tool where you can estimate your savings from not only going solar, but the home electrification. So you can literally say, gosh, I'm, I'm thinking about a Nissan Leaf for a Tesla. How many panels would that be for my specific situation? And how much would a hot heat pop, pot water? And they've really done a, a good job. Um, one thing I will say is if you know you're not interested in solar, you know, from Sunwork or you know you don't qualify, there's a comment section and just put that in the comments say, hey, I know I don't qualify, but I'm just checking out the, this, the tool because it's a really fantastic tool. Uh, to be able to see and play around with uh, the electrification part of things, as well as the solar part uh, from, you know, uh, certainly a sun work economic standpoint. Mentioned the, the tax credit. Uh, the tax credit is currently set to go down to um, 22%. 
in two years, in 2023, and then go down to 10%. However, there is the Build Back Better law, and you know if that ever gets passed, currently I believe is it would put it up at 30%, but who knows whether they'll you know get it down to 26 or whether they'll get passed at all. So in general, I wouldn't worry about the, the tax credit too much right now. It's going to be 30 or 26%. Uh, and in fact, any if you go to most installers right now, you probably won't get an installation until next year, regardless, because um, it typically takes you know a, a month or two, and in some cases, in our case, in some geographies, it's even three months. So just be prepared for that. Um, the other thing that's really really important from a timing standpoint is, as I mentioned, we're currently on this net energy metering, what they call 2.0, but that's going to change to net metering 3.0 and that'll probably happen around mid to late next year and right now it's not looking good uh, it, it, right now it, it's going to be much better to take the current um, NEM program than the future one the the minimums meaning the ten dollars may be 20 or 30 dollars and the uh, amount you get for the energy you send back to the grid may be significantly less so that's the real timing to think about. So now is a great time to think about solar. Tell your friends about it um, because getting it in before that NEM3, and I think there is going to be kind of a rush, you know, start of you know January, February next year. Once they final firm up, you know, that timing, there's going to be a rush to to get in under that uh, under that change. Um, there are a few other things I know we uh, need to, to move on here. Um, in terms of these are some purchasing tips that that we have for you. Obviously, you want to get, you know, check, you know, Yelp reviews and solar reviews is another like Yelp for solar. Um, one key thing is that you don't want to put down more than a maximum of about thousand dollars. In fact, that's by law that uh, solar installers can't, um, you know, charge you that more than that. Uh, and that's really important. There actually have been some folks that. You know, the installer said, hey, I need 10,000 for the materials and they never saw the installer again. So, you know, that, that's a really important one. Um, uh, there is, uh, I think we have one more slide here. Oh, we've got the, the, the purchasing guide and I believe you'll be able to get these slides so you can see, uh, you know, that, that URL or you can go to our website for this purchasing guide. Uh, and I think here's another list of, of goodies uh, the Silicon Valley Toxic Coalition PV survey is kind of an interesting thing to take a look at the scorecard in terms of the uh, um, solar and solar panel manufacturers uh, and, and how they rate, rate in terms of their environmental sustainability. So that's kind of cool. And then just one last thing is um, if you're low to moderate income, definitely check out another nonprofit, Grid Alternatives, um, because they really focus on that uh, on that space. Uh, with, with subsidies, et cetera. Oh, and then, you know, finally, we have, uh, if you are interested in actually volunteering, understanding solar, getting installation experience, uh, even installing on your on your own uh, home, uh, it's good to, to get the training. And the next one's actually in March, it's, it's online, and you can uh, register on our website. Okay, that, that was a quick run through. I know we have some time for questions later. So with that, Brianna, uh, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Mike. I think we're actually doing pretty great on time. So um, next slide really quickly, I want to introduce Peter's reintroduction slide. Okay, take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Brianna. Uh, great, great for everybody to come out. Thanks so much for the time and the interest here. Uh, my name is Peter Levitt and I represent Peninsula Clean Energy. Um, keep going, Brianna. So I, I want to tell you a little bit about Peninsula Clean Energy and some of the programs we are running, and then we can get to uh, all the good questions that you folks are uh, positing about solar on your homes. So Peninsula Clean Energy is a community choice agency, a community choice aggregator. We were formed um, with a unanimous vote to form in 2016 um, by each of the city council members in each of the cities in San Mateo County and the San Mateo County supervisors themselves. Uh, we provide our customers a discount on their electricity and have saved an estimated $18 million annually so far since our formation. We're also we've also contributed to 96% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions uh, simply from electricity uh, compared to 2016. Um, so, you know, 
Peninsula Clean Energy was formed with a mission of driving decarbonization, especially around renewable energy. Our vision is a sustainable world uh, where everyone can access clean energy. Our, we have a lot of really bold renewable energy priorities. First of all, um, we have one of the most rene aggressive renewable energy uh, portfolio standards of anyone in the world to provide 100% renewable energy by 2025 on a 24 seven basis so that every hour of the day is powered by renewables. Nobody, as far as I know, nobody has targeted this on such an accelerated basis, not even Hawaii or Denmark, what have you. Um, so it's very aggressive, uh, which is why we are being very bold about our programming around renewables as well. Um, we're also supporting our member jurisdictions, uh, all of the municipal, uh, all the cities and the county itself of San Mateo County, as well as the city of Los Banos, in reaching the state's goal to be 100% greenhouse gas free, not just renewable electricity free, or not just powered by renewables, but 100% greenhouse gas free by 2045. And we're evaluating currently how to strive towards a 10-year acceleration of that goal. So there's a lot of ways uh, to get to all of these goals uh, and a lot of things we need to accelerate together. Um, in order to make electricity as clean as possible, we need to electrify everything. And we need a lot of distributed solar and distributed storage. So homeowner solar and storage. Um, but we, we also need to electrify buildings. We need to electrify the vehicles that we travel in. Um, and as I mentioned, the distributed resources, we need a lot of those as well. So in an effort to spur more distributed energy resources, we are partnering with Sunrun, who is a solar provider in San Mateo County uh, and other parts of the Bay. Um, and in San Mateo County, if you install solar and storage with them, you can receive a $500 to uh, $1,250 incentive um, upfront. This is available to any homeowner installing solar and storage um, through the end of the year, if you sign up with them through the end of the year. Um, and then beyond 2021, there are also going to be incentives, um, although they might be slightly lower than this. Um, so, so we already, Mike already talked to some of the benefits of going solar and adding battery storage, but I'd like to harp on some of those as well. Um, first of all, there are finance options available. Um, a lot of solar providers, including our, our current primary partner, Sunrun, offers a finance solution like a lease back. Um, so by going with them or, or anybody that offers a financed solution, such as a power purchase agreement or an energy lease, um, you're able to avoid spending a lot of money out of pocket and instead uh, pay off that, that uh, bill over time. As well, um, solar and storage is a great way of uh, controlling your electricity bill. Energy rates are expected to go way up over the next five, 10 years. Um, and uh, this is a way to lock in a, a, a set price or at least a, an energy price that you know is going to escalate only gradually over time um, uh, compared against the high electricity rates we're expecting. Having batteries next to your solar, as Mike touched on, uh, drives backup power or energy resiliency, which helps you maintain power during a power outage. Currently, if you have uh, solar by itself, then you likely cannot power your home during a power outage, um, especially in the evening. But adding a battery enables you to be able to uh, have backup power in a power outage. Um, and then lastly, this is also a community thing, you know, helping uh, adding solar and batteries to your home helps enable more communities uh, to transition entirely to 100% renewables. Uh, at the bottom of this uh, slide here, you can see the website that you can go to in order to uh, pursue the $1,250 incentive for going solar and storage if that is something that you or somebody that you know is interested in doing. Um, so I wanted to, maybe we can um, pause here and uh, start answering some, some of these folks' questions.
questions. Um, but in general, if you're not, if we're not able to get to your question tonight, you can always reach out um, to Actera, to Sunwork, or to me. You can see my contact and our website on the slide there. Thank you so much, Peter and Mike Balma as well. Thank you both. You were very informative um, answering um, many different relevant questions about solar.
Um, I want to follow up on, so Bill Hilton, thank you so much for the good questions tonight in the chat. Um, one question you had here is, um, since, since Peninsula Clean Energy and Silicon Valley Clean Energy offer 100% renewable generated electricity, uh, why put up rooftop solar on one's home? Um, so first, one quick clarification. We, we offer um, greenhouse gas free electricity currently, and we are uh, planning to transition to 100% renewable electricity by 2025. Those are more than semantics, it also means like where, how, what sources of energy power uh, San Mateo County. Uh, but also, um, in terms of why solar for rooftops, so um, you know, there's there's a lot as to why why rooftop solar when there's already 100% renewables. First of all, um, you know, rooftop solar can help your bottom line. Uh, you know, it, it it's a, a system of controlling your electricity costs um, compare and and relying less on a, a California grid that is becoming more and more expensive. Um, so it's a hedge against California's rising electricity costs. So I would say that alone is the biggest reason why if I was a homeowner and had access to a rooftop, um, I would I would seriously consider a- adding solar to my to my home. Um, second of all, um, you know, solar is a, a good way solar and batteries are a great way of protecting against future power outages especially in california we've had a number of power outages the last three four years um pg e has claimed that that is going to happen through 2030 um and we don't know how severe those power outages will be but if there are if we get another really bad fire season it could it could really accumulate and um, you know be an inconvenience to folks. So batteries are a good way. Batteries coupled with on-site generation like solar energy are a good way to protect against that. Um, there's a number of other reasons why solar. Uh, you know, it, it's it's like um, one one thing that I I like about solar is that it it's so direct. You know, you're you're getting power. Um, from the grid that it's shipped so many miles away in, into your locale. Um, whereas with solar, it's right on your rooftop. You know what's happening. You know that it's powered by renewables. There's no, um, you know, there's no pizzazz uh, around or, or, or cheap tricks that, uh, with respect to accounting, that makes it re- technically renewable. It's it's you know it's so direct. <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite things about solar is that you know you can really look at it and it's tangible and, and visceral. So, um, Mike, if you have any other additions or if anyone wants to piggyback off the discussion here, by all means, jump in. All right. Well, we're well, hearing none. Brianna, you want to take it away? Yeah. Um, I just received a question. Hi, Brianna. In addition to recommendations for battery installers i would also like some recommendations for someone that can do some maintenance on an existing solar system i can follow up with you offline yes you may certainly um follow up with us offline um we have a list of installers that i can send to you that we recommend um another question just came in from paul any thoughts about vehicle to home or vehicle to grid i think that's a question for mike i would say can you folks hear me now yes we could uh, I was on mute there, and I was trying to follow up on on Peter's last uh, comment in terms of why put solar on roofs. So I'll, I'll just do that before I get the vehicle to grid. Um, in terms of um, some people would prefer to have solar installed on their roof rather than have it installed out in a d- desert or Central Valley or something like that. So similar to what Peter's saying, you you know it's on your roof. You know you're not harming that. So for you know folks that are really environmentally conscious, that's another reason they like to, to have it. And I'll also re-emphasize, uh, you know, having your own security uh, and the backup capability. If you've got solar on your roof, if you've got an electric vehicle, if you've gone to uh, a heat pump for your heating and your cooling, uh, and you have your batteries, you're, you're actually fully independent and you're environmentally friendly uh, from not using fossil fuels. So um, even if the economics aren't, the security can be a, a really strong motivator. Um, in terms of vehicle, or, or uh, the, the question was oh, vehicle to grid, which is not, doesn't really have much to do with solar, but um, I mean, there are uh, uh, cars and trucks that are, are coming out with vehicle uh, to home, like the Ford F-150 that, that's coming out. So, and I think uh, Hyundai or K- 
Kia has another one, and Honda. So I think more and more are, are coming out uh, with that kind of capability. And that's clearly, uh, I think there's going to be kind of a race now that a few of them have announced it um, to actually deliver that. Um, so that, that's my opinion on that, Peter, if you've got another perspective. Yeah, uh, it's it's a great it's a great technology vehicle. It's you know it's very important that our we're able to utilize as many devices as possible to power the transition to renewables and complement the um, intermittent renewable electricity that is coming online in California. Um, and so, I'm very excited to see what happens in the vehicle to home and vehicle to grid space. But generally speaking, as Mike alluded to, it is a nascent solution that not a lot of technology providers uh, can deliver. Um, we at Peninsula Clean Energy are piloting a vehicle to home project, I believe, and uh, working on understanding the technical challenges associated with, um, with that. Thank you, Peter. Um, I believe we went through everyone's questions. Are there any other questions that anyone would like to ask before we close the call this evening? Okay, I'm glad we made it through everyone's questions. Usually there's a couple that we're not able to get to. Are there any incentives for Santa Clara County residents? Um, Peter, do you know if there are any solar incentives for Santa Clara County? I don't, know if, as well. I don't know if there's anything special about Santa Clara County. I know that Silicon Valley Clean Energy, who provides the uh, electricity supply for Santa Clara County, is working on a program like Peninsula Clean Energies. Um, and so, Emily, if you could, if you wanted to reach out to Silicon Valley Clean Energy, I, I would ask, I would possibly ask them, or, or if you're interested, I can connect you. Um, but I don't know. I'll, at the bottom, bottom speak line. to that. Go ahead, Vanessa. Yeah, so I, um, yeah, thanks so much for your question. Um, I used to work at Silicon Valley Clean Energy, so I can uh, give you a little bit of insight there. Uh, so Silicon Valley Clean Energy serves a majority of Santa Clara County. So if you don't live in the city of Santa Clara or don't live in city of Palo Alto or don't live in city of San Jose, then you can take advantage of the different programs from Silicon Valley Clean Energy. Um, the resource that I'd like to uh, direct you to is the um, eHub, and they have, and that's basically like a, a set of uh, resources and tools for going all electric in your home. And let me pull up the link. Um, so they have a tool for solar and battery storage for your home. So I would also go there to look. And, and I'll just mentioned, of course, the tax credit is a federal tax credit. That's for anybody in the U.S. Thank you, Vanessa. Did you say you were pulling up the form or? Yes, it's in the chat right now. Okay, perfect. You will all be receiving the follow-up email with a recording to this, a present, a slide, the slide deck as well for you to refer back to. And another question came in, federal tax credit is only if you buy solar panels, not if you lease, correct? Are there incentives for leasers? So, so this is Mike. Uh, the basically, you have to be the owner in order to get the uh, tax credit. Uh, so, if somebody else owns it, uh, like the installer or a finance company, um, they would take that credit and hopefully pass some of that on to you. Um, so, you know, I, if you're getting something from as a lease or something, make sure that that they're passing some of that along. Uh, they can play some tricks in that in that regard. So try and get things uh, apples to apples uh, if, if you're looking at, um, you know, financing arrangements. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. And as well, thank you to Peter for joining in and providing a lot of information regarding um, the energy and utilities. Thank you. This has been a very informational workshop. We are, have been great on time and I'm always appreciative when we finish within the hour. So as well, thank you to everybody. And for follow-ups, please email me. at Brianna, B-R-I-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, period, Duarte, D-U-A-R-T-E, at actera.org. Stay tuned for the follow-up email tomorrow. Good night, everyone.